Uh oh, I guess that means we're gonna got to go. It's like, uh, hello, well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, it's Kevin Klein with Adventure Outfitter Weekly. Excited to have everyone here. We're gonna go through and have an Ask Me Anything section. Um, I know that a lot of people are coming on right now into the uh, in the core uh, community audience, and then we're now um, we're now streaming out to I think LinkedIn. But just wanted to welcome you first off. To the Venture Outfitter, um, part of what we're going to be talking about is a little bit of an extension of a community conversation and some important announcements, and then hearing from some voices that we haven't heard from before. And uh, in a little bit, I'll be calling on Melvin and Lindsay, and then a couple of new voices, uh, Federico and Peter. Um, all of y'all get ready to rumble in just a second. Um, Thank you to our sponsor, DualWorks. DualWorks uh, has offices. They have co-working offices and mailboxes. Um, it says starting at two hundred dollars a month. That is on the co-work. That's a co-working membership. If you also need, a, if you need a physical point of presence because you're outside of the country, and you need a mailbox, we have quite a number of entrepreneurs that have their physical point of presence internationally here at this location that's right in the middle of Austin. Tech Ranch works with four different locations, uh, four different co-working places in Austin, but this is where we hang our hat. So come on over if you're interested. Kevin, do you have, uh, do you have your slides? Ah, they're not showing again. I hate Zoom. Okay. <laughs> now, okay now. now do they go through? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that is. Every once in a while, I click that button, and then it doesn't. Uh, I I probably just I clicked it, and I thought that it did it, and it didn't. All right. Well, here we are on the fancy dancy dual works slide. TechRanch.com slash dual works has a little bit of information. If you go through us uh, as a tech rancher, you do get a special discount. So take advantage of that. Um, Venture Outfitter. I've uh, I've been promoting our network level for quite a long time and i realized that this was dissuading a lot of people from not participating for free with us and so i'm just promoting the free level at this point so that you guys can take advantage of that and please 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 do um that's what it's here for um and we'll be talking more about uh, and it's interesting over the last few weeks that we've been talking about this we've got a lot of act good activity happening on the slack channels so looking for entrepreneurs, mentors, investors, and other stakeholders. And the big key thing here is that we're here to drive shared prosperity as entrepreneurs together. So please join us. Coming soon, we have an opportunity for mental health startups. And uh, for those of you all that know, any of you that know me personally um, for long term, uh, it's interesting. The Founders Pet Project, the Founders Pet Project is now going big time. Uh, there's three universities that have now said that they're going to participate on top of the Meadows Foundation and the, and the um, Hogg Foundation. And so we'll have some formal announcements that, about that coming soon. Um, the, uh, another one of the groups that's in the mental health special interest group um, that I chair as part of the Texas Global Health Security Initiative is um, the Texas Suicide Prevention Network, and um, Lisa Sullivan, who's the executive director of that, is on my committee. And so uh, as, as an extension of that, I'm making sure that we promote uh, the work that she's doing across Texas. It's a free event. Uh, you can always check the techranch.com slash events uh, website for all the details, and please join us on that. Um, and then the the even larger event that's happening right after that is as part of the South by Southwest, um, the Texas Global Health Security Initiative is having a Global Health Security, uh, Global Health Security Innovation Week. And TechRanch is participating with us heavily. Uh, more information is available on our events calendar. And then I'm going to call out a couple of events in just a second in details. And then May 12th, we'll be participating with the, uh, the World Affairs Council on the Texas EU Business Summit. So uh, join us about that. The specific thing we're going to talk about in the um, Texas EU Business Summit is TechRanch has a number of bridges that we've launched to Europe and that we'll be launching to Europe. Uh, we launched the Texas Hungry Venture Bridge last, uh, last November, at the end of November, and we're going to be launching a Czech Republic bridge right around, it's not been totally finalized when I'll be on the ground, but it should be April 25th. 
through that week. Um, and we'll do some other activities in the Central European area. But, uh, but I'll be in the Czech Republic and Brno, uh, Czech Republic. Uh, more details coming about that soon. But uh, then in May, we'll actually have a lot of reporting on what's been happening with that as part of the summit. And South By is coming back to town. What is South By? South By is one of Austin's largest conferences. If you haven't read about it, yeah, um, we can tell you a lot more. But TechCrunch is going to be doing a lot of things during that week. March 11th, if you're international and you happen to be coming into town, um, along with the city of Austin, TechCrunch, and another organ uh, a number of different organizations are going to be um, supporting, you know, just welcoming um, a bunch of different international uh, delegations. So if you don't have information about that, let us know. We'll actually have this on our website. Um, I don't know that it's been rolled out there yet, but it'll be in the morning on uh, that morning of the 11th. The 12th to the 15th is when the Global Health Security Initiative uh, kicks off. All the details, again, will be, are, can be found at the Texas GHS. I said .com in that slide, and that should say .org. So I apologize mm -hmm. about that. I'm not sure that the .org, mm -hmm. uh, that's my mistake. On March 14th, I'll be leading a, or I'll be a part of a panel on supply chain issues. And I'll be talking a little bit about what's happening in manufacturing and the refactoring of, or reshoring of manufacturing to the U.S. The thing I'll be talking about is how TechRanch is building bridges with several different Mexican states to um, take advantage of the opportunities there. And uh, that's what I'll be talking about, but it's a full panel there. And then big days, March 14th, we're going to have a number of our startups. If you're virtual and you're not going to the physical South by, you can participate in this for free. But we'll have a number of, of startups that are working on global health security. And as I kind of was alluding to earlier, um, TechRanch, or me, one of my pet projects has been, how do we help more mental health startups? We we're putting together this big group of organizations to really help drive that because there has been a mental health crisis during, um, during our COVID break and uh, we'll be doing a lot more stuff. But then the, the big day for that will be Global Health Security Recovery about brain health, mental health, community resiliency. There'll be a full day of programming Again, it's all available through the Texas GHS website, and it will be cross-listed as well on the TechRanch events calendar. So before we get into the Ask Me Anything section, I also want to make sure that we talk about uh, one of the things that's really starting to emerge is these little sections of conversation are happening, and they're decentralized. They're not just about the TechRanch corporation, right? There's, a, there's four different organizations that, that are underneath the TechRanch uh, trademark umbrella. But then the real interesting thing is, um, the real interesting thing is that there is a bunch of things that are happening with regards to uh, study areas that I want us to be doing together. And so one of the study areas, I want to give you kind of a, um, a preview on and then we'll go ahead and post this into an area that any of you that want to get involved can get involved. So back to the slides. The thing that's happening is there was this interesting NPR, uh, NPR article recently about psychosocial stress and health outcomes. And a gentleman by the name of Dr. Sandeep, um, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, so I'm going to say Dr. J um, versus mispronouncing his name, has this really interesting TED Talk he talks about how there are mental health outcomes, uh, not just mental health outcomes, but heart health outcomes that happen that the only thing that's identifiable is there was something that upset the person that then caused the heart attack that happened. Uh, NBRR had on their Instagram this, this uh, comic book series that showed that you, know, you could actually take a pill to lower your blood pressure but not do anything about your psychosocial social stress, the stress of you know, dealing with whatever's in your life, and still have a heart attack. In fact, part of the story that he actually talks about, and it's talked about in this, this, um, this set of um, comics, was there was an older gentleman who was um, 
almost bit by a cobra. Someone brought the cobra into uh, his house to say, hey, this cobra is the one that almost bit you, but you know, it's been killed. Even though the older gentleman wasn't bit, the amount of stress that created just by having that snake close by him, he ended up having a heart attack and died. Um, now, uh, Dr. Jahar um, ends up speaking about this in his TED Talk, but I thought that part of the thing that we are looking at as entrepreneurs together are what are the issues that we can do to lower our stress as entrepreneurs with each other, right? And there's some interesting data about this. Um, I put together a Google Doc that has some background material. Um, the, the first uh, thing on the YouTube uh, background material is actually from the Wisdom of Trauma series where Dr. Gabor Mate, who I'm a fanboy of, interviews Dr. Uh, Porges, uh, who I'm also a fanboy of. And what they talk about, they, just to get to the, to the conclusion about that is, they said that the number one thing that creates stress to be a detriment or not, like all of us are gonna deal with unsafe situations, whether they're financial or physical or whatever they might be. The number one thing that impacts whether or not that stress becomes something that creates a traumatic issue is the amount of connectivity the person has. Like you can be in a war zone and have a lot of connectivity in your community and be fine. Whereas you could be driving down Mopac, you know, one of the roads here in Austin, Texas, have a heart attack just because the guy cut you off. What's the difference there? And, and so he talks about uh, that. That's his part of the interview um, in the first part. The NPR article that you see linked to in that Google Doc uh, is the one from Dr. Jahar uh, that you can read. And then what was even more interesting as I started digging into this a little bit and doing my prep work for inviting kind of almost like a study group, like, you know, some people have book groups and I don't know that we have in the past TechCrunch had a uh, book study group. Instead of doing a book study group, if anyone wants to be a part of this, like this group, join the mental health Slack channel. I'm looking for experts and uh, lived experiences and um, the, the dot, dot, dot longer term is how do we organize around that. Now in the past, we've, you know, when I used to joke about having, you know, uh, campfire, which is an event that we do here in Austin, we've done a lot, that uh, campfire was really supposed to be a therapy group for entrepreneurs. I used to joke about that, but the truth is that we did it every two weeks to kind of create connectivity among our really tight group of entrepreneurs. We also did this with, um, or I did this with uh, Bootstrap Austin. And it was really helpful because sometimes you can't turn to your buddy. Like I have a buddy that works at IBM. I met him at IBM in 1988. He's still at IBM. I absolutely love him to death because he's one of my drinking buddies from college. But the truth is when I tell him about the stress of being an entrepreneur, he doesn't understand. And so we have to find other entrepreneurs that we can connect with because they understand, right? There's like a different type of thing. I want to do some more stuff about this. If anyone else wants to look into this set of um, area concerns and be part of the, what we'll call a study group and then get involved more um, later, make sure you get yourself into the me mental health Slack channel. And if you are not in our Slack, if, our Slack's available for entrepreneurs. It's not a place to go if you're a vendor that you're looking to sell something to our community. And so um, the only time that we'll kick someone out is if they're a vendor that's just looking to sell something to the community um, and you do that, uh, that is the one thing that it's not there for that. It's there to actually support each other, mutual support. Um, back to this, if you're interested in being part of that study group, join the Mental Health Slack channel. Most everything else will happen here from there. And that in this, uh, this Google Doc that I'm pointing to that I started earlier today is open for comments. And if you want to be part of the editing crew that adds things to it, you can. That'll be coming soon. But uh, that brings us to one other thing. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, who runs, he's a founder of Harris Digital. I met him as part of the Texas Hungry Venture Bridge is going to be leaving to, uh, from Austin back to Budapest tomorrow. Um, it's been great to have him in town, so we'll celebrate him. Um, and actually, I'll be pushing on him really hard later today to get all of his last minute US market entry things. Um, 
and we can uh, we can get that uh, make sure that you uh, support him um, and the other uh, the other Hungarian entrepreneurs that are there as well as all the international entrepreneurs but I'm um, really bummed that Peter's leaving it's been fun to have drinks with him it's been fun to uh, been fun to uh, uh, I drag him over to the Starlight Lounge or not Starlight the Skylark Lounge um, for some really raucous music and stuff like that so Peter this is my official teary goodbye. Actually, we'll, we'll save that for later today. Uh, we'll hear from him in just a second as, as we get into this. But uh, today's Ask Me Anything, although really today is really community conversation and just recognizing some of the different people that, that are here in the session. We can talk about anything. Uh, the only thing I say is it's not about selling. It's about uh, supporting each other. Um, I'd love to get any kind of discussion that wants to come out. I know that I already told a few of you before we started that, uh, that I was going to call on you. So let's just, let's do that. Um, so with that, uh, Lindsay Powell's in the house. Lindsay's been a long-term supporter and team member of TechCrunch. Let's put him on the spot first and just say, hey, Lindsay, how are, how are you? What's up in your world? Tell us real quick, just so everyone else gets to know you a little bit better. Thank you. I, I suppose I am used to being put on the spot, but not quite like that. <laughs> well, hello, hello, hello everybody. Uh, my, my, my role is nominally marketing, um, but I'm an angel investor and, and a big champion of startups. Uh, in fact, I'm with a syndicate, uh, which is an international syndicate now uh, called Gangels. Um, so I spend a lot of time actually li listening to pitches from companies. And more and more helping the companies as, as an advisor to, to, to boards. And in fact, there's one based here in local in Austin called Legal Karma. Um, and in fact, what would, how small the world is. So we, in fact, met the gentleman uh, uh, who set up this, this company six months ago at, would you believe, a campfire event. The last one we did at Concordia. He actually came up to us and talked with us and then went away and then COVID. And then he reemerged and said, I've got a startup. I'm the CEO and co-founder. So I'm now helping him with things like customer journey, branding, and that sort of stuff. So, so that's all exciting. Um, and uh, I'm actually with a group of people I used to work with in another life, in another era, in another century. In fact, it was another century. Um, uh, a, a hard tech startup in California that's building a whole new generation of things called MEMS. I will, let, I will explain those things to you. They're very, very, very small and very important. If you want to use things like LiDAR on your car or have a, an iPhone, which the screen turns, you have all sorts of clever stuff in there, but based around them. Um, so I'm building a business to help this company build their business. So I'm discovering that getting traction, if you're in the business of trying to raise money from VCs and investors, is really hard to do. Um, and uh, that, so, so what excites me these days is how I can help people get traction, specifically in areas like sales and marketing. Um, the, the one thing I always tell the, the startups, startups is think about how you sell your product. Um, I'm always amazed that uh, people spend a lot of time crafting the offer, which is terrific. You have to do that, but not much thought to the sales process and the values that the customer responds to when you're trying to pitch your product. It's not build a better mousetrap. Nobody really cares anymore. It's what, what, what is the solution you're trying to fit? And then the pricing. So here's this week's challenge for me to give an example. I am pitching to land an annual uh, retainer contract with this startup that I'm working with, this team of people I've assembled who have got the who's who Rolodex of Silicon Valley. And, and together we can offer this customer. How do I price this? How do I price this offer? And I, and I went to college and the other two guys went to college and we've been spending the last two weeks trying to work out the value and the pricing of our offer. Um, so I'm having to think like a startup. <laughs> it's really, really interesting um, because, you know, you, 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 if you underprice it, you leave money on the table and you don't get the full return. You overprice it, the customer goes, ah, you, I can't afford you. And now where are you? So, so it's, it's, it's a really interesting game of psychology. Um, but, but it, so I, I'm living the life of a startup at the moment. <laughs> that's quite, 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 quite fun. So that's I would love on. to actually have, well, one, one of these times, it'd be great to have you come back. You've presented to the VO Weekly, I guess it's been, it's been a very long time ago. I don't even know. Everything, uh, time's warped since uh, our COVID vacation. So, uh, Well, in fact, but, on uh, Facebook yeah. today, um, a picture of us appeared where you and I and Kristen were down in the hotel strategizing the event we were going to have to coincide with South by Southwest in 2019. 
And wow. then we had to cancel. That's why we went to the virtual, our first ever virtual event. Yeah, I know that, uh, that was quite a scramble, but it came off really, really great. Well, it'd be great to have you come back and, and um, especially for channels. The thing that um, Lindsay knows better than anyone else I've met on the planet is understanding how to develop a, a B2B channel. Um, and so I'd love to have you come back and uh, present and just say, and, and then also I want you to talk about your, uh, your. I, I'm personally, well, he writes, he writes all these books about, uh, Roman times yeah. and different yeah. individuals in that. Which it, tell about that hobby too, because it's interesting to see how you're developing that as part of. Well, it. it's it's totally over here, but it, it's yeah. interesting. So 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 really, at the end of the day, I'm interested in, in in commanders, campaigns, and conflicts. But underpinning all of that is how do people react in those really interesting situations? So how do you lead in war? How do you rally people to put their lives on the line so that you know that you, you can actually win a battle and so on? So I've written eight books now uh, about famous Romans, people like Augustus, for example, Marcus Agrippa, and and again to put yourself in the in the creator um, startup mindset, books just don't happen. You have to have an idea. You have to articulate the idea in what's called basically uh, that we would call it a pitch in startup language, but it's basically a book proposal. And the way it's constructed these days is, is, is a marketing plan. You have to explain what the idea is, who the customer is, what the channels to market are going to be. And, and then you give sample chapters or pieces of the text so that the, the literary editor on the other side of the desk will say, yeah, the demographics right. Yeah, we service those channels. Yeah, we think we can sell a quantity of those. And I like your style of writing. You can deliver the product. So what's amazing when you when you pitch an idea for a book, it's no different. It's no different really than going in front of a, a bunch of people on on Shark Tank or if you're in the UK, Dragons Den, uh, where you're basically saying, "I'm the CEO of a company and I'm looking for an equity stake." Blah blah blah. Because what I'm after is an advance. What I'm after is a contract so them to actually go and sell my book and I'm after their publicity department to help me sell lots of quantities. So for me, the fun part is, is, is coming up with the idea, is, is, is working it all through in its stages, pitching that idea, winning the order, writing the thing, working with the team to create this thing. Uh, my last book, in fact, um, went out in October and in fact, there was a two-phase release because would you believe paper is really expensive these days? Publishers are finding the cost of their paper has spiked upwards. Amazingly, a lot of paper production has been taken offline because they're building corrugated board. So they're not printing paper, they're printing brand boxes to ship Amazon goods in. So that means the supply of paper is much reduced, which means that your magazines are going up, your, your books are going up in price and so on, all the margins are going down. Um, and then, of course, there's all the marketing. So I've had to use social media and I've done articles. I've done uh, web, web, webcasts with different people. Um, I'm, I'm getting people to write reviews. So my, my average score can go. Uh, so, so being a writer, if you do the job properly, is being an entrepreneur. Uh, and I think that what, what's absolutely fascinating, I've got to be reasonably good at it now because I've learned from entrepreneurs how to do those things and my career in marketing. What is astonishing to me is to see how frustrated, I mean, you were talking about mental health earlier, I mean, anguished some writers get because they say, well, I wrote the book, nobody's buying it. And I'm thinking, mm. well, are you trying to sell it? <laughs> and it doesn't occur to writers that they actually have to sell their products. And I go, but like, basically, if you make something, a book or a candle or, or a new piece of software, you have to learn how to hustle for it. You have to learn how to convince customers, get your offer in front of, in my case, readers. And um, uh, the great thing is if you're successful, then you get a stream of revenue, right? You get the long tail. So I've got eight books and my first one came out in 2011. I'm still getting royalty checks. I mean, they're small royalty, they're more modest, but they come out every year, twice a year. And the more you do, the more you get like a layer cake of, of royalties. So it's exactly analogous to having a core product with, uh, with adjacent market product versions or uh, line extensions or whatever you like. So the principles are exactly the same. It's just, I'm, I'm a writer when I'm, so, so in the daytime, I'm looking forward to the future with investments and with, with startups, fixing all sorts of problems. I mean, uh, one, for example, I invested in is a company called Finless Food, where they're trying to solve the fish product uh, uh, problem. Uh, we're depleting our fish stock. So they say, why don't we culture fish proteins? And the great problem they had is you can, you can culture fish proteins in, in a test tube effectively, but you try replicating the striations of tuna. 
and the muscular features, the mouth feel that when you when you eat a piece of tuna, you know what that tastes like. A protein made of fish won't do that on its own. They have to they have to do some clever stuff. Another company that I invested money in, which is fascinating, based on some patents coming out in Imperial College London. Uh, was, you know, when you have uh, tests, you either have to have blood drawn or there's all sorts of, like, no, we're all sticking things on our nose, right? Remember all those things? Well, they said, why don't we just spit in a tube, right? You do it for 23andMe and all these other things. And they're, they're building a box. In fact, a series of three boxes. One would be in your uh, local pharmacist. The other one would be in your local clinic. And the other one will be at home. And it will have firmware updates, which, which are programmed to look for molecules, viruses or toxins or whatever they are. And you'd spit in this thing, put it in the machine, it'll do it diagnostic, say, yeah, you're, you're clear today, but you have a brewing problem with a cold, right? And I'm just thinking that would be brilliant. That, that would be able to put diagnostic help right in home for a reasonable price. And for me, as someone who can't stand having blood drawn out of the veins, to be able to do that through spitting into something, I think would be outstanding. So, well, yeah, so, and especially to have it to have that fast, so fast. That's great. So we need to get you back to actually talk about the books and talk about that because I think the thing that I actually think is really interesting about what Lindsay is pulling off is you know having this passion area as well as this business area, and and getting to uh, and and actually turning both into revenue streams. Well, let me let me, let me sort this out to, to pick up your theme of the mental health. So I've been to any number of events face to face. In, in the before COVID times, where I would talk to an entrepreneur who is absolutely passionate about their business. And then we'll say something like, but you know, um, I'm gonna have to give up my other things. So one of my great friends, she's a softball coach, right? And knowing her, softball is an important part of her identity, right? Being with other girls and being able to help them bring them up and, and develop their talent. And I thought, no, 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 you can't do that. You have to find a way to do both of that. Because if all you have is the startup, um, you, you, it will just suck you dry. I mean, that you, that you can never spend enough hours on your business. I mean, there just aren't enough hours, right? If you had 24, you'll, you'll want to spend 25, 26. Um, so I say you have to have other things to balance you out as a person. And uh, for me, I always found that writing and telling stories, because that's really what writers do, we tell stories. Uh, mine happen to be nonfiction stories as opposed to imagined ones. Um, but I mean, what, what makes me, uh, what gives me an identity separate than that is being able to, you know, be involved in the ecosystem and apply everything I know for the last several years about business and, and, and doing both things makes me happy. If I only did, if I only did the writing, I think it became, see, the thing about writing, it's a lonely, it's a lonely job, right? Again, a bit like an entrepreneur, right? I mean, you, <laughs> you spend an awful lot of time on your own, in your head, thinking things through. You're trying to play a game of three-dimensional chess where you're trying to actually come up with your product offer and you're talk, trying to keep your co-founders happy and uh, your investors happy, of course, uh, your clients and all of this stuff is going on in your head and you want to scream sometimes because it's only you in the echo chamber. And when you meet with people, it's usually a stress situation because you're asking for something, money or a commitment or something. Um, so if you have something that you really enjoy doing that's just fun because it's fun to do, you have to do that too. Absolutely, you have to do that too. Um, so uh, that that's my little wisdom from the last. Yeah, wait, no, years. no, it, you're you're preaching to me for sure. <laughs> on that. Well, no, I I I just I, I just I've seen so many people who said I I gave up my hobby and something, and I'm thinking, why did you do that? Because oh, yeah. by the way, oh, the no, for is, me for me it, for me it's definitely like uh, I'm definitely uh, wanting to get back on the aikido mat. And uh, yeah, we didn't get to do any Aikido because, you know, you had to get close to people to throw them. So, <laughs> well, the, the other thing is, I mean, the, the brutal reality is, um, you know, half of startups fail for a whole bunch of different reasons. People, people are, are analyzing and understanding, um, but you're always faced with the overwhelming odds. So as a human being, you need to have all those other things as well to always turn. I mean, you need your friends and family, um, but you need to be able to enjoy a sunset or a Pina Colada, whatever it is you do, or write as I, whether it's poetry or writing about the lives of long dead people, um, you know, but that's kind of cool. Well, thank you for being here today, and we'll okay. we'll have you back and make sure um, Jello, make sure you actually send uh, to Lindsay a uh, a request for uh, the the getting him on the schedule and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, Melvin, um, tell us what's happening with the, the, the nonprofit, the Tech Ranch nonprofit, and other things in in uh, around your world. Melvin's our resident Marine, by the way. Inter American Education Consortium we use as uh, venture access. And before I say anything on that, Kevin, I need to tell Lindsay that I love him and I want to get in front of him, and and I won't bring any stress. So, <laughs> I appreciate. Uh, 
Inter-American Education Consortium. It conveys the tools of technology and entrepreneurship to underserved groups, empowering them to solve underlying pernicious issues by working cross-cultural, cross-border, using global insights to solve problems. So we have to fit what we, we we're a 501c3, so we fit what is in our, our bylaws for that. So that's why I uh, threw that out there. So uh, <clears throat> there's uh, so many things that are available under the umbrella and uh, uh, working with Kevin and, and the bridges, working, uh, with folks, you know, anything that, that you see, take some time, please. There's a channel. Uh, is it on Slack, Kevin, or do we have it in? Uh... There, there is a grants channel that if you see a grant that you think um, that, you know, the Tech Grants family of companies um, or the nonprofit should be aware of, there is a grants channel. Um, that And that's, that's set up in a way just so, if you ever see something you suspect might be of interest and you want to let the team know, um, you can throw it in there. Uh, now, I don't know, Melvin, if you have a specific channel set up for the, uh, the nonprofit itself, uh, just for a general conversation. To tell you the truth, I, I actually don't know the status of that because we were using a different tool. And what would you like to do about that? Um, how would you like people to interact with you concerning it? Um, yeah, throw it in, in the Slack. And, and if it's not set up, like, you know, Kevin and I are not sure of that, but we'll make sure that it's there. Uh, take some time and, and uh, if, if it's, uh, if you don't have the time other than just grab it and throw it in there, then, then do that by all means. But if you have the, the time that you can invest, go in and, and look at it and vet it, make sure that there's uh, something, throw your ideas out there. Do, do not discount any ideas. If you think there's a partner, somebody that we can uh, work with, uh, put that information out there and, and uh, you know, we want to continue on. The, the nonprofit's been uh, in existence since the 70s, um, and we need to get more air under the wings right now. And so, uh, you know, if if, uh, if I could, I would be on my knees right now talking with you that, that you know, I, I know that this is a great thing that we can do and, and make a difference. So does that fit everything, Kevin? I think so. There's one other thing I'll just throw out there, especially given the interesting times that we live in. The, uh, the nonprofit was responsible for grant, getting the grant that built the, um, the Texas-Russia bridge uh, back in 2019. Um, that the, the foundation that granted the nonprofit the funding for that has come back to us and said, hey, we, uh, because you're one of the few uh, that one, the first time you, there's an opportunity to apply for a, a, not as large of a grant, but another grant. And since we live in such an interesting time about what's happening on the border uh, with regards to um, Russia and Ukraine, it's, it's like, okay, part of the way to shift, um, you know, a lot, some people actually think that uh, we should have global policy that when there's bad actors that you just separate with them. I actually I practice a martial art that actually says, okay, if I want to resolve conflict, I've got to, like, I've got to engage. Um, one of the things that we have an opportunity with through this nonprofit is to go after that second chunk of funding. And it'd be interesting to, uh, to develop a small group of people to look at what happened with the first bridge in Russia. We ended up being successful. It was really interesting. And then right now in the context that we're operating in, in the world, what should we be doing right now? It's an interesting question. It's not a lot of funding, um, but it is. Uh, there is an opportunity that uh, that just came across my plate that I handed off to Melvin. Uh, that if you have ideas about that, about how entrepreneurs bridging across uh, worlds can do things, talk about it. Say if you see something, say something, as they say. Um, but uh, direct that conversation towards Melvin. And Melvin, if you don't mind, um, please share. Uh, well, he has an email address, melvin at techranchhalston.com. And if there's any other way that you'd like to make sure that, that they follow up with you, Melvin, um, tell us. Now that's perfect. Perfect. Okay, good. Um, Kevin, so let's just keep... it's fine. On the Slack channel, um, I, I know that some people know I do this, but I'm an avid reader. 
Um, and I post articles from a bunch of different places. You mentioned NPR earlier, The Economist, um, uh, Vox, whatever. Also, there's so much wonderful reporting on startups and venture capital investments and themes and, and all stuff that's happening. Um, and, and you can learn a lot just by reading and following famous people and not so famous people and learning from failures, learning from success. So I put them all in the um, hashtag articles channel in Venture Outfitter, and it must be like three or four years worth of content by now. I'm not saying you have to go read it, absolutely not. But if you just scan through, you might well find those things in there that uh, are, are just of interest. I mean, for example, there, like, I mean, can you imagine if you go back up, uh, uh, that, that one there, and the, uh, here is about valuations of startups. I mean, as an investor, I agonize about this stuff. The fact that the stock market is doing what it's doing is impacting valuations, that's one thing. The next one here, I mean, th think about these poor guys in Ukraine. Um, you know, I mean, th these, these are entrepreneurs working in a war scenario. I mean, and they're coping with it, right? So mental health and all that stuff. Wonderful article about those, those things and plenty more like that, which is, I think, actionable and useful. Um, so I invite you free, go have a look in there and, and I keep adding to it because I just find there's so much wonderful stuff out there. Yeah, and this is one of the things that's really interesting that, um, you know, it's really clear to me uh, that the experiment of going to our Mighty Network uh, website isn't working like the Slack channels were. And, uh, you know, Lindsay's example is great because there, there are articles every once in a while, there'd be one posted from me, but most of them have been from him. And there's just like, like you said, there's, there's a long history of articles here that are really interesting. Um, just remember that there are a lot of different channels that are here. Um, you know, the mental health one is the one I was mentioning earlier. And, uh, the, I noticed that even right now, a handful of y'all have gone, this is the article I was saying earlier with the Google Doc that I posted. I think we're gonna really go heavy on this because that just you guys are giving feedback just by the way you're, um, you're actively engaging in it, that, uh, that this seems to be your favorite place to, to interact. And what you'll notice is it's not tops down. This is supposed to be a community and um, that like as an example, Lindsay's, doing his work in articles. We have uh, Stephen Galbraith uh, and uh, Holly Custard, who's the, um, the expert I mentioned. In fact, Stephen, are, I think I saw you on. Are you here right now in the uh, audience? I can't see since I'm sharing my screen. Stephen, you were here earlier. What's happening with uh, ed the EdTech channel that, that started popping together uh, 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 just a few weeks ago? It looks like Holly's going to join us next week on that. So, uh, who's Holly? Just so everyone knows, just so they know. And and then um, obviously yep. Jello and Stephen make sure as quickly as possible getting that on the calendar and all that, so yep. more people know about it. But who's Holly? Yeah. So you had introduced, uh, you had known Holly before too, and Holly uh, does work in the education space to connect schools with employers and helping them with the skill sets that they're going to need for you know th those types of jobs so that's um that's what she's doing with her with her group now, yeah so, so as an example back in the when i initially met holly she was the chief innovation officer and then she became the chief academic officer at a really large ed tech company called pearson pearson's one of the largest in the united states and so she comes from that background what happened, uh, I think it was two uh, VO weeklies ago, um, you know, Stephen said, hey, I'd really like to get more ed tech startups uh, around. Uh, we have, you know, Janet, who's a professor at ACC. We have Melvin, who's a professor at Texas, um, Texas uh, TSTI. I always forget the, what the, the, the name stands for and all that sort of stuff. We have um, uh, Greg from Fidelium Tech, and I said, well, let's go ahead, it, because there's now a big enough group to actually say that there's a group there that's not mm -hmm. something I'm leading. Um, Stephen said, hey, he'd lead, he'd lead the uh, interaction. He's the peer leader in that part of the community, and it benefits him to be the peer leader in that part of the community because he gets him more ed tech leads. I introduced um, one of the world's top experts, you know, Dr. Holly Ann Custard is her name. If you look at her LinkedIn, you'll see that she's uh, she's a force of nature when it comes to education. Uh, and she's like, you know, based on conversations I'd had with her two or three years ago, and she said, yeah, I'd love to engage. And so they're now engaging around this. It's decentralized. It's not something that's coming from 
Tech Ranch Corporate. It's it's mm-hmm. it's actually uh, you know it's a, it's this is an open source um, community, and so Stephen's mm-hmm. leading that. If you're interested in being a part of that ed tech, get involved in the ed tech channel, and then um, Jello, Stephen, and Holly, make sure that y'all get that uh, posting out so we can actually get. Uh, I know that we kind of come out kind of late on some of our announcements. We'll eventually get over that, but I would like to actually see that posted as quickly as possible. That way, if you have, if any of you have questions about it, instead of coming to me, just it'll be techranch.com slash events. That, that way you'll be able to find all the data. Steven, anything else you want to say about the coming session? Um, no, just looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I listened to some of her other interviews that she had done uh, over the past uh, year or so. So, um, her, her uh, organization is very interesting. So I definitely, uh, you know, you want to be on that call next week. That sounds great. I'm going to put the next person on the spot. And he didn't get to hear the wind up because I know he was uh, in a, a board meeting before uh, he came. Um, we have an emerging bio area and bio experts, um, Dr. David Sprague. Uh, David, would you like to, I mean, I know you don't, you didn't hear the, like the preamble part of what happened, but tell us about industrial genetics, LLC. Tell us about what you do with the uh, different organizations that you can, uh, that you can speak about publicly. And then, um, part of what I want to be signaling is, uh, again, kind of like what you and I were talking about yesterday, the, the, you know, this work that's going to emerge around, um, bio and deep tech. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, a little bit on the spot. I'm sitting here desperately trying to figure out what the pattern is. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, um, as Kevin said, I, I just got off a board meeting. I'm on the board of trustees of St. Edwards University, and I'm the chair of the development committee. And this last year, we onboarded a new president, a new dean of the School of Natural Sciences, and new provost. And so there's, there's a lot of stuff that's that's going on at the school. Um, Now, the business that I have industrial genetics is in the process of moving um, to Austin from Temple. I live in Temple, Texas. And um, primarily this company was started uh, at the beginnings of COVID, which is an ideal time to start a company is during a pandemic. Um, But, you know, we've we've done some pivoting and and all of that. I'm my training is kind of weird. I have a doctorate um, from Texas A&M University in essentially genetic engineering and cloning, a matter of fact. I was taught how to clone by the guy who cloned Dolly the sheep. And then I went, uh, after I was done with my doctorate, I went to Scott and White Hospital to work as an embryologist. Um, and so I, it's weird. I, uh, I'm a very introverted person. I call myself a conditional extrovert. Um, but I, I found I was okay, at, you know, good at talking with patients and stuff. And um, then that job was actually quite stressful. It was a very small program. So I left that to be department chair of biotechnology at Temple College, where I trained people, including transitioning soldiers and older than average students, really high performing young students and all this to go work in high tech labs that were uh, that at the time were up here at, at Scott and White Hospital. Um, and then there was a huge political shakeup in our town and essentially uh, Scott and White got taken over by the Baylor system and they kicked out all of their PhD scientists um, and said, hey, that doesn't suit our business model. And so all those high tech labs went away. And then I, you know, there were some family issues that we had, uh, did some homeschooling with the kids, which is miserable. Don't ever do that. I don't know. That <laughs> did, did not work for me. That was a horrible. Oh, my God. But Anyway, that's when I learned I had dyslexia with numbers. So anyway, uh, then I decided that I would help some folks um, with their businesses to help kind of get, get some businesses started. So that, that, that embarked on my five-year um, pain tour of uh, entrepreneurship. And coming out the other side, right now, really what I feel that I am is a, a connector of sorts. And so when... When I met Kevin and I, you know, if I'm getting like way off track, just let me know. I'm just no, kidding. no, it's perfect. It's perfect. I, I, I love, I think part of what we need to do for the community is show the development edges that are emerging because 
the thing that drives me crazy is I can see all this because I, I, I'm connected to all of y'all experts. All y'all experts out there, all you smart people in all these different countries with all them funny accents, right? I'm like, and, and so part of the thing that I really want to have happen is, um, is, is for you to do exactly what you're doing because now people are starting to hear the bio background, the genetics background, the tie to St. Edwards University, and um, we won't necessarily tell them all the details about why we've been working together intensely over the last four or five days. And what, you know, we can't necessarily announce something that we haven't necessarily won yet, but, but as an example, the fact that, that it's active, that's important for the community to hear because then they will start understanding these distant, the, um, you know, as, as software went to open source and decentralized, we are taking a, a entrepreneurial incubator model and decentralizing it. And it's important for startups, whether in Austin, Texas, or somewhere in Central Europe, to, or somewhere else in Nigeria, since we, had, we have entrepreneurs that are representing all those different countries around the world, it's important for them to hear this. And so this will end up becoming kind of a reference. So that's perfect. Go ahead, David, if there's yeah, other no, stuff. You, you, you yeah. can be quiet now. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, I, I think the one thing that I, that I really want to say is that um, I, I get bored real easy. And I'm a genetic engineer by training. That's actually what I, what I do is DNA stuff. I, that, that was my thing. Uh, but I went to a conference in Montreal one time, and it was a huge medical conference that had to do with uh, human reproduction in the clinical setting. And I was in a breakout session with some of other embryologists, and there was a it was just a little little bitty group of us because the super nerds were the ones that were in the in the labs that were eighty five degrees year round, you know, culturing human embryos and stuff. And he came up with this tiny microfluidics device to culture embryos instead of these giant incubators, just this tiny little microfluidics device. And I said to him afterwards, I said, hey man, I'm usually pretty good at like putting different kinds of technologies together to come up with something really cool. I said, but this completely escaped my radar. I said, how did, how did you come up with this? And at the time he was, uh, he was up at Northwestern up in the Chicago area. And uh, he said, well, at our school, we have the ability for, um, you know, physics to present to chemistry, chemistry presents to biology, biology presents to, so you get the point, there's kind of a cross pollination of technology. And, you know, I met Kevin through text GHS, and just kind of a roundabout way. But when he started explaining what, what TechRanch was all, all about, I my mind completely flipped out because I was like, oh my gosh, we have the ability to put people with disparate and different backgrounds together to say, hey, this is what we do. These are our abilities. These are our challenges. And what can we do to solve problems that haven't been solved before? And that's when I was just like, oh man, I am so on board. This is so freaking cool. And uh, <laughs> I was just, I was just blown away. So I am you know, it's, it's been, it's been fun working with Kevin. Like he said, we're kind of working on a project right now. And, um, you know, I apologize for being late, but I had some other stuff to do, but I'm here and I'm really excited in the sense that, um, that this is worldwide, that we, we reach everywhere because, you know, you know, Kevin says, you know, there are people from other countries that talk funny. Well, I'll tell you what, my dad, my mother was Texan. She talked real funny. And so I'm, I'm used to that. Um, and, you know, we, we've got we've got the ability to really my there's a tagline in my company. It's collaboration drives innovation. And really what's behind that is diversity of thought, technology, all sorts of stuff. And I think that, you know, I, it's just exciting to me just to just the prospect with the Slack channel and and just, you know, some of the stuff and I'm, I'm new to this. So. Some of the some of the stuff that uh, I'm, I've been kind of busy with this last week, but you know, essentially what I'm doing is I'm bringing together um, folks in the venture space whose hearts are in the right place. They're not the parasitic type of venture people. You know, who really want to give back to the community, who really or have a collaborative spirit, 
and this and that's what I that's what I've found so far, you know, speaking with Kevin and I, you know, just by listening to you guys just a little bit here, I, that's the kind of sense that I get. So there's my long winded introduction. And I see that uh, Paulina says St. Ed's alumna over there. So, hey, Hi. <laughs> that's <Hello>. awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll have to we'll have to talk uh, on the on the side or whatever. But yeah, I know it. Uh, the school's doing really good, and you know, um, you know, I'd love to talk more about that. But that's another conversation. So thank you, Kevin. Uh, well, and, and, yeah, thank you, David, for being here. And and we're gonna have David come back and talk a little bit more about the bigger map that that he's pointing to. Um, I have. I know we're coming to the end of our hour together, and so I want to I want to put uh, one of our entrepreneurs on the spot. I'd said that since Peter, this is his last his last full day in Austin. Peter, what did you learn while you're here in Austin? Are you still uh, still there? I can't see your face right this second. Come back on really quick and say what what did you learn while you're here in Austin? And then Celia, if you have something you want to say as one of the other uh, Hungarian entrepreneurs, uh, I'll have space right before we wrap up. But Peter, really quick. What, what, what's happening? Um, oh, by the way, you're still on mute. Probably that helps. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Kevin, so Peter represents a number of group of, a, a group of PhDs that have come up with a really interesting AI machine learning platform manufacturing, but tell us about it or tell yeah. us what, what, what's happened since you, uh, since you came to Texas, boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a complete change of mindset, I would say. And this is what I, what I needed the most. So probably that's, that's the main benefit uh, what, I, what I gained here. Of course, I'm here, you know, to, 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 to grow our company, to find new clients, and, and this being happening, that, that's great. So our, we are outreaching to, uh, to investors, building the network. That's uh, inevitable. Uh, and the, one of the key learnings is, yeah, if you want to make business, in America, you have to be in America. And uh, but I also experienced uh, that, uh, yeah, Texas is a great place for, for lending. Uh, Austin is a super uh, place for lending and Kevin is the best host for, for that. Uh, so <laughs> I, I honestly, Kevin, uh, really, really learned a lot from you and how to make business here, how Americans are, are approaching business, what are the differences, what we can uh, take home, I personally, uh, and what I can transfer from all this to the rest of the team, uh, you know, changing the mindset of, of, of these guys, you know, and uh, that will help us, I'm certain, to jump out from the, from the frames that we build around us in, in, in being in, in a small Central European country with all our limitations, not only uh, market-wise, but, uh, you know, the way of thinking is, is totally different. So I think that's the, that's the best learning and, and it was really worth uh, spending these two months in the USA and yeah, uh, pretty much of it in, in Austin, Texas. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. when Peter, uh, Peter, I'll definitely miss uh, our interactions and stuff like that. I've learned a lot as well. As we look at, there's just this amazing technologies of all different types all across Hungary um, that you know we got to see the first glimpse of, and then Peter's company is one of the ones that we really gotten to get into into in depth. And part of what we're all learning is how to build products and also how to build and transform ourselves. And so I want to acknowledge. Um, what Peter's been going through, because it's not been easy. It's not been easy to be away from home. It's not been easy to deal with frickin' gringos in America. You know, it's not been easy to uh, deal with my style of pushing um, to, to help drive things. And I've, I've learned a lot as well from the standpoint of, uh, uh, like, there's a fundamental shift in some of our programs, Tech Ranch's programs, about what we're going to be doing, about how do we actually help entrepreneurs and cultivate into, you know, anytime you step across a, a country line or into a new market, or in, you have to, it, it, as much as you build a product for something, someone else, you have to build yourself. And so um, thank you for being a part of that process. And if anyone wants to join us, I'm gonna take them out for drinks later on tonight. So uh, you're welcome if you're in Austin, just make sure you text me sooner than later. Um, I'm wondering, um, I, I would love to put you on the spot more. We're coming up against the, the last little bit. Celia, did you want to, is the other Hungarian entrepreneur that's represented today, anything, tell, tell everyone about your background because yet another impressive uh, doctor, PhD, representing, you know, brilliant technology out of Hungary. What, what would you like to say? Tell us anything. I was, uh, you know, I was very amazed about today's discussion. Yes, Peter and I, we speak the same language. 
I have a very diverse background myself, so I believe in David's diversity. I have a Hungarian father and a Panamanian mother. I was born in California, but raised in Hungary. So interesting background. I have a medical degree, but I also have an MBA. So I'm trying to teach doctors how to better intervene with their patients, how to educate their patients. And uh, it's really a challenge. So I'm really looking forward to learn from you. I was listening very much to Lindsay. Uh, I think it is very important what he was saying about his book. I love history myself. We can learn a lot from there. And uh, yeah, I look forward to participating in hopefully all of the events because it's cool. Thank you. That sounds, well, thank you for doing that. Um, and Celia and David, I wanna make sure that we will be setting up the, uh, the weekly check-in calls. Uh, Peter, he's got, uh, we've, we're doing something one-on-one -on -one with him, but on, for the two of y'all, since you're both waiting for, or David Nichols um, and, and Celia, um, if there's any feedback that you have about the times that y'all like to drive those, those group calls, I'll work around your schedules as long as they don't interfere with VO Weekly and our, and our weekly team meetings. So uh, those, y'all two are going to drive that right now more than anything else. I had kind of thrown out 10 o'clock on Tuesdays. I'm not attached to the time. It really depends on what works for y'all. All right, well, let's do this. I uh, wanna go ahead and, uh, we've already had a couple of people say, hey, sorry, gotta go. Uh, just as a reminder, if you're not on our newsletter list, if you are looking for different links for what we're up to and things like that, the Clearinghouse webpage that has a bunch of the links for the newsletter and getting involved in the community and signing up if um, into our mentor approval process or if you have a country that you're um, you're involved in that you want to make sure is represented uh, at the end of um, at the end of uh, February we're actually going to be doing or it's just in a couple weeks I'll be speaking in um, via zoom in Armenia so if you're involved in Armenia or you're interested in that let us know. And we've got a couple other uh, Central European countries that are represented as well that we'll be doing some more activities with. But connect here uh, as well as uh, keep a, a look on our events calendar. And then it's always an honor to work with entrepreneurs driven by vision and values. Let's go change the world for the better together. Thank you all and have a great afternoon, a great evening, great morning, whatever part of the world you're at. Thanks. Bye. Take care.